I just Okay. Moving on. So before the next talk, I'll just quickly make this announcement that everyone who's signing up for the lightning talks, um, at four, please be down here uh, just to get your microphone and if you need to connect your slides or whatever, just be down here at four o'clock. And we can move to the next talk. So. The next talk is by Carl, who's going to be talking about data processing pipelines with Apache Airflow and Python. Can I have a big round of applause for Carl? Time slot, the second speaker after lunch, you are all digesting your food, sleepy, I see a lot of sleepy faces. So I guess I'm gonna have to try really hard to keep you entertained and educated. It's actually my uh, second time already here. I was uh, surprised that I got accepted uh, to speak uh, the second year as well on pretty much the same topic that I talked about last year. We're going to see a show of hands uh, who was also here last year. Luckily not that many because I'm using the same slides. <laughs> not, not really, I'm not actually, I'm not a university lecturer so I, I won't be using the same slides year after year. I, uh, I work at the uh, Credit Info, it's uh, an international credit bureau and uh, business information uh, provider. We also have, uh, I'm also doing a startup on the side, but obviously it's, it hasn't taken off yet. Otherwise, I wouldn't yeah, be at Credit Info. <laughs> So what will I be uh, talking about? Uh, again, the show of hands, does anyone know what I'm going to talk about? Does any, has anyone used the uh, Apache Airflow? Uh, like four or five people. So for the uninitiated, it doesn't have anything to do with air conditioners. <laughs> uh, I'll first... Uh, give some uh, use cases about data processing and where Apache Airflow could be used. I'm gonna dive a bit deeper into Airflow itself, the interface, the building blocks. And uh, then I'm going even more technical about the deployment, the setting up and some alternatives. First, what, what do I mean by data processing? Well, if, if you're a developer, then uh, data processing is kind of what you do every day anyway, or your code does. There's uh, a lot of different uh, ways you could define data processing or a data processing pipeline. A simple use case would be a user goes to application, fills in some form, data gets posted over an API, transferred into uh, columns and stored in a database. Probably you all have done those this kind of use case. The data processing could also be a streaming application. You have some IoT device that's uh, constantly capturing movement data, for example, and uh, sending it to the server in real time. And the data is then transformed in real time 
fit into a machine learning model and uh, some predictions are made. Then there's also a third use case where you already have data in your operational database somehow, either through user field forms or IoT device or from some sensors. And uh, so you have your operational database, your law of data, but you need the human analysts to analyze it, to look at it. Maybe you have a marketing department that uh, needs to have a constant overview of how the business is doing, like this is our use case of credit info. It, it's not important that the data is 100% uh, real time, it doesn't have to be update by the sec up to date by the second, but it is important that, that it's uh, user friendly in a way that uh, consumers of this data don't need to do complicated SQL QA, they don't need to do joins, they just want to have data in, uh, let's say, some uh, BI tool like Power BI or Tableau. For this, you would need to, you need to do those uh, joins and transformations uh, before it, it gets uh, loaded or extracted into the tool that the end user is, uh, is using. So I won't be talking about the first use case. I won't be talking about the second use case either. I'll be only talking about uh, this uh, third use case. And uh, I think it's the one of the, it, it's most reasonable to use uh, Apache Airflow in this very specific case where you have, uh, it's not important that the data is absolutely up to date real time. It's fine if you have some uh, delay. <coughs> It's not event-driven, so the data transformation or the data processing doesn't have to take place uh, after some specific event has happened. It just uh, has to happen at regular intervals, once a day, every hour, every half an hour, every minute. This is where Apache Airflow comes in. So Apache Airflow is uh, an open source uh, tool, it was originally um, developed at uh, Airbnb. Basically, it's, uh, it's an application written in Python. It runs on, uh, on a server, on a Linux server. Usually, we run it in uh, a Python virtual environment. It has uh, two main components, the Airflow service, which is the, the main engine and uh, provides the visual user interface and uh, it also has a scheduler which uh, keeps track of uh, what job needs to be executed and when. And it also needs to have access to a database. By default, it's uh, SQLite. But uh, in most production cases, Postgres is used, and I will get to the why. So let's have a look at how uh, Apache Airflow looks to the user. To the end user of uh, Airflow would typically be a data engineer, for example, or a data analyst, a data scientist. Could even be uh, a non technical person at all, like just a business person. The Airflow provides uh, a fairly easy to use interface. It's a a browser-based application, so you don't need to install anything on the computer, it just access it uh, from the browser. 
Well, you would need to treat the, you would need to SSH into the Linux server that it's, in, that it's installed on. You can do that uh, using an SSH tunnel. Where is it set up? Uh, what we, this list that we hear, see here, is that the main building blocks that you have in Airflow that go on the back, so the hectic acyclic graphs, the fancy name, but uh, these are really just Python scripts. We have a schedule there. It's uh, using the standard con syntax. So those of you who have uh, used con tab, it's, uh, it might seem like, uh, but it actually is uh, a wrapper, a, a lot of additional functionality is around Conda, so the use case is pretty much the same. You have specific times when you need to start some processes, and uh, Airflow does this for you. Conda could also do this for you. What else do we have? Uh, what are these? So, some of the bags or some of the processes have, have failed here. It's uh, a good thing with the uh, airflow that uh, you can't get from a gun that you can see how your tasks have run, how many times they have been executed overall, how many runs have failed. You can either manually run them again. You can set uh, you can configure Airflow to run a tag several times. If the first time fails, you could, I don't know, configure it to run the attack five times again, ten times. Uh, it, it also provides uh, very easy logging. We have all those uh, tiny blue icons here. Get, uh, this provides access to logs, for example. You can see graphs, uh, visual graphs, and how, what were the execution times of your, of your processes. <coughs> uh, how, as to how long it took for some job to run. That's some. Uh, more fancy functionality, well, I have personally found a good use case for it, but uh, in the top menu you could also, uh, it also has a query tool, so you could uh, basically make your SQL queries to your database directly from uh, Airflow. You, wouldn't, you don't need, even need uh, a client, separate client for it. And yeah, so when you have a lot of different uh, regular occurring tasks, I would say it's a much better way of doing it than with the Gonda. What of those uh, Python scripts or tags as they're called in Airflow? Tag is basic, basically means a direct acyclic graph. Just means that uh, you have uh, some set of subtasks that are executed, uh, you could be executed in parallel, in a sequence. The only thing is you can't go back from one subtask to a previous one, so it, it only flows in one direction, but there can be merging of the outputs, it can be parallel processing and so on. how it looks in the Airflow interface. So we have a fairly simple use case in uh, Credit Info. We're loading all the data that we have in our operational database, all the 2,000 tables we have, uh, loading them uh, to data warehouse and uh, doing some uh, transformations on them. Here it's just uh, one uh, database. In this example, it's the Estonian uh, business registry database that we are 
we are just loading all the tables in parallel into our data warehouse where the data analyst can uh, access them much faster than they would from just doing QX to an operational database. Also known as ETL, extract, transform, load. The sub tasks of those uh, tasks of directed acyclic graphs, uh, they're called uh, operators. We uh, there are several types of operators. There's the Python operator, there's also bash operator. So I mentioned that Airflow is, Airflow is written in Python and uh, it works best with Python. That's why the Python operators. From the UI you can uh, access a lot of different uh, functionalities and statistics about the process, like there's uh, different ways to visualize. There's, you can uh, you have easy access to logging. You can see uh, when a task has failed, what was the exception, whether it was retried, what was the result of the retries, what was the time, how long did it take. You can have uh, you can have a look, see visual graphs of uh, how long a task took. For example, if you see that uh, some uh, loading task started taking uh, a lot longer than it used to, might be something something wrong with your database. You could also uh, you can also see the code, the Python code directly from here you can edit it but you can you can see it so this is uh, Python operator this is a very simple uh, simple example of a Python operator so we have the uh, task ID is just uh, a string that's put together from uh, two variables, the database name, underscore, the table name. The Python callable, this is the function that this Python operator is performing. In our case, we have a function called write snowflake. So it's uh, this write snowflake function, it uh, writes data to a snowflake data warehouse. You could also specify uh, what to do uh, when uh, this task or this Python operator fails. In our case, uh, send a message to Slack channel. It could also be uh, send a text message to your phone. If it's some very business critical task, you send an email. It could be initiate some other tag. And yeah, and, and the last line in the example, the task set upstream, this, is, this basically specifies where in the order of uh, uh, subtasks this particular Python operator should be. In this case, it's uh, upstream from another task called unimaginatively task one. Okay, so now we've looked at uh, how the interface looks like, uh, what are the building blocks, how does the code look like. It's uh, basically standard. The Python it just adds this uh, operator and uh, being upstream of some other task uh, functionality. So how do we uh, work with Airflow? How do we, uh, so said you, you can uh, edit the code directly from Airflow. So how we do it, uh, the way quick and dirty way, in the same uh, server that we have Airflow running, we also have a Jupyter Notebook service constantly running. 
the all the DAGs that are directly accessible from the Jupyter notebook, so we can uh, we can create new uh, DAGs or edit the existing ones uh, directly in uh, Jupyter notebook. You could call it a uh, pretty, pretty dangerous way of uh, doing things, basically we're editing code directly in production. Of course, if you, it depends on the uh, use case uh, and the criticality of the tasks that you're running. In our case, uh, what happens if uh, a task, if there's some bug in a task or if it fails, it's just the marketing department is uh, not getting their numbers for the previous day or getting incorrect numbers for the previous day. So none of our customers uh, are affected. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it depends on uh, how critical are the processes that you're running. In our case, we will created in Pastone, it's a fairly small company as well. There's, uh, we don't have tens of departments uh, depending on, uh, on, our, on the business analytics that we generate. So in our case, we, we took the risk of uh, basically ha having the ability for the data engineers to edit the code directly in uh, production. Uh, if you have some more critical workloads, of course the better way probably would be uh, to use uh, a proper CI, CD pipeline to uh, have a build server which then deploys your tags to the Airflow server. But as I said, in our case we went with that. Uh, simpler way. Okay, so now if you uh, maybe some of you have now started thinking uh, that Airflow might be something you would want to use in uh, with some of your projects. So how do you set it up? It's, uh, it's a very easy, straightforward process. It's just uh, first you need to install the set up uh, Postgres database. As I said, by default, the airflow comes with uh, SQLite, but the problem with SQLite is it doesn't have allow, it doesn't have the ability to do parallel connections. So it would be severely limiting uh, your performance and uh, ability for Airflow to, uh, to run a lot of tasks and uh, tags uh, in parallel. That's why in, in production cases Postgres is used. <coughs> Start the Postgres service as usual. Airflow is just install uh, using pip like, uh, like you would use uh, with any Python library, well, Apache is not exactly a, a library, it's a bit too big to be uh, a library and it has an interface, a visual interface, but the installation is uh, similar. Change the one line in the configuration file, switching from SQLite to, uh, to Postgres. Uh, initialize the database. Then you start the uh, Airflow Scheduler, which is the, the, provides the Conda functionality and the, to keep the scheduler always running, you uh, register it as a service so that it's constantly on. And when you, now when you start using it, uh, just uh, connect to your Linux server with Putty, create an SSH tunnel, uh, open your browser, type in localhost 
and the fourth nail that you in the tunnel, and there you go. You have access to airflow interface. Then I guess a single list and question marks and then you drop it. Um, obviously there's alternatives to airflow. As you as I already mentioned, uh, this, uh, the standard the Linux one that if you're the if you're kind of a person who likes administering Linux servers, likes the command line, likes using the Vim editor. If you like doing things with the console, then uh, you might not like Airflow and its visual interface. And there's always uh, one that, but as I said, the uh, functionality is quite limited. Uh, in our case, well, there's a lot of uh, commercial, not open source alternative to Airflow as well. In our case, for ETL, we use the tool called uh, Matillion. It's, uh, the interface is, made, is even easier to use, basically a drag and drop built-in uh, modules of, of transformations, join them together and um, are very easy to use, but uh, apparently with uh, very easy to use solutions, they don't always work very well. Matillion is uh, written in Java and it started producing uh, totally non-understandable un un exceptions and uh, failed in uh, failed in very unexpected ways. So we had to migrate our entire ETL uh, process um, from uh, enterprise to open source. A lot of uh, open source alternatives to Airflow as well. The one that I came across uh, after on deck, it's, uh, I haven't used it uh, personally, it seems very, fairly similar to Airflow, just with uh, less functionality and uh, uh, seems to be simple, simpler to use. But personally, me and uh, from our team and credit team, we are, so far we are, we are very satisfied with, uh, with the airflow and the functionality and the performance it provides. The only, uh, well, for me, uh, the only, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a fault of airflow, but the only thing that we're missing is uh, having a managed version of uh, Apache airflow. So right now we have to. Man, we have to manage the Linux virtual machine ourselves, or if you're more of a system administrator type, you have to manage your own server. In a small company, it doesn't make that much sense. So if, uh, if the Amazon uh, feature request team hears my prayers, then please build uh, a managed version of uh, Apache Airflow. Okay, is that pretty much it from my side? Uh, I think in conclusion, uh, I can stress this enough, Apache is uh, it's very good for its uh, very limited niche. If you try to use it as, uh, I know, in, in a more event-driven architecture, it, you could use it, you could do, uh, you could start uh, start execution of a tag with uh, with using sub process for example, but uh, not not the most optimal way. There's uh, there's, it, there's uh, you would there would be a large delay, several seconds until the tag actually starts and. Uh, um, Streaming applications uh, also not uh, not the best tool. As I said, the, there's a delay. If you know Python, then uh, Airflow will be 
very easy for you to get the hang of. Because you would basically be building, uh, you could be building ETL scripts in, uh, in a day, a few days. Well, it has a very nice uh, user interface, uh, a lot of useful functionality on top of one tab, and uh, yeah, very easy to set up just using it. So thank you from my side. Uh, I guess if I get accepted to speak next year as well, get to the presentation about Rundex perhaps. Something similar. Very insightful. Thank you. Let's get to the questions. Okay, so we have quite a lot. Is it a good idea to use Airflow for real-time data streaming? What alternatives can you use for this task? Well, as I said, don't use Airflow for real-time streaming. It's, uh, it takes time for the task to initialize, and uh, when it's in, re in real-time streaming, speed is most important. Airflow isn't uh, built for speed. It's built for easy management of workflows. But uh, about what would I use? Uh, I have to be honest, uh, I have no idea. I've never done uh, real-time data streaming. Um, no good answer here. Cool. What would you recommend? Uh, event, event driven. Um, the, most, the easiest to use uh, is uh, orchestrator for event driven. Uh, data pipelines that I have used uh, is uh, Amazon Step Functions. If you're, use, if you're using the, in the AWS ecosystem, then uh, Step Functions is great for orchestrating event driven. Okay. When you did code directly in production, then how do you test and validate the logic before rolling up new features? So that's, a, that's a very easy question. We don't. <laughs> well, it, in, in a, we, we, we use it in a fairly limited uh, scope, so that own, uh, currently the only uh, because end users uh, is the marketing department, so they just need to get the, the no sales numbers from the previous day, and uh, so we don't, we, we're not building any, we don't have any customer facing uh, solutions. Uh, depending on uh, airflow yet. We will have them, then, we, then we're gonna obviously have to use a proper CI-CD pipeline, but uh, uh, right now the answer is we don't. We just uh, hope that it works. And if it doesn't, then we hear it the next day from the marketing department. Will you share your presentation? I yeah, I can, uh, I can send it to the organizers, they can share it in the Code Club Facebook uh, group, for example, or I can send it to the organizer. Yeah, we've already tweeted a few slides from the previous presenters, if you want to have a look, and yeah, uh, any slides that we have, we, should, we can share those. Why not use Telegraph, Prometheus, Propana instead? Again, to be honest, uh, I haven't used any of those, so uh, I... I can't compare. Uh, if, I, if I would start uh, explaining why I think Airflow is better, then I would be bluffing, so I'm going to skip that question. Okay. Can you use parallel processing with Airflow, GPUs? If yes, what tools would you advise to use for that? Yeah, you could uh, use both parallel processing and uh, GPUs. I mean, pa parallel. Uh, ability to do easily execute tasks in parallel is uh, why we one of the reasons why why we're using Airflow. It, it may if you if you have used uh, multi what was the library for called in Python multi processing or if you have used this library then uh, in in Airflow it's even easier to do so you can uh, you could have uh, Processes where the second step depends on the output uh, from all the previous processes, and uh, 
nejako utvoriti do do the five output from the brick from the parallel executed processes into a single second step where a parallel processing G GPUs you would also use inside the DAC. So it, it doesn't it doesn't Airflow doesn't add any limitations on the Python libraries you could use. You could, uh, when it's compatible with whatever, you could, uh, you could even run your machine learning uh, tasks in Airflow. You could, if you have some use case where you need to retrain the model every day or every hour, you could very well use Airflow. It doesn't add any restrictions to what you can use. Okay, does Snowflake GDBC come out of the box or there is add-ons for that or for Redshift, for example? Yeah, Snowflake has both GDBC and uh, it is, yeah, it's downloadable from their website and uh, very easy to use. It also has ODBC. Uh, for Redshift, uh, Redshift also has GDBC. Yeah. Okay. Out of the box. How many business end users do you have configuring playing with Airflow? Do you use authentication plugins to enable SSO, etc.? Uh, business end users, currently we don't have any business end users interacting with Airflow. We will have in the future, currently there's only one uh, data engineer who's uh, uh, keeping an eye on whether the DAX have uh, executed them. Uh, and fixing bugs, and so yeah, currently we have only one person who's daily working with Airflow. Authentication plugins, uh, we, we just use uh, SSH we use to, to be able to access uh, the interface of Airflow. You would need to create an SSH tunnel to the server. Then, then you would uh, then you have access uh, via the browser if you have some IP restrictions, for example. Then, then you can't access it. But we have, yeah, we haven't, we don't have any fancy authentication, but SSH and creating an SSH standard is probably the most secure way, anyway. Okay. Could I use SQLR bash scripts as building blocks for DA sheets? Yeah, absolutely. It uh, has bash operators built in uh, R scripts. Uh, I don't think it has R operators built in, but uh, you could, uh, you could <laughs> the easiest way to run an R script with Airflow is that you create a bash operator that uh, calls the R script and uh, that's it. SQL, well, uh, I don't know what, what was exactly meant by using SQL as a building block. Uh, well, you, you can't have a like, SQL operator, you have to, for example, if you're, if you're using, if you have a Postgres database, you would have to use the Psycop library to execute the SQL commands. In, inside the Python operator, so yeah, no, you can use SQL directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Does Matillion enable programmatic API access? Example, I want my team to configure ETL via code and have Git versioning. No, Matillion doesn't have any of that. It's, uh, it, you, you can't be, well, you can, but it's uh, ETL via code in Matillion, it's pretty complicated. It's it's meant for it's meant to be a drag and drop. You can have Python code in it, but uh, it's meant for drag and drop. And uh, as far as I know, don't have uh, don't have API access. So use Matillion only when you have uh, fairly standard setup. When you have when the data loads. And the data volumes are small, and uh, and when you and when you don't care it, it one morning it catastrophically fails. In this case, use Matillion. Okay, last question. 
Is Airflow good to give scheduler possibilities with UI for end users? Can you define the DAG's user will be able to run control? Yeah, I get it. When in the slides when I showed the interface it had uh, an owner of the DAG and in the admin panel you can uh, basically configure what the user has access to what DAGs and what can they do with the DAG and just run it. Can they uh, I know, view the logs only or Okay. Due to lack of time, we'll just move to the next segment. Thank you so much. Please